Welcome back to Pete's Workshop. Well, you can see behind me this gray GTI Performance Edition. So it's got an ACC, uh, cruise control radar issue. Need new rotors. Uh, it's got a blown headlight globe on the front right, which is why the headlight's out of it right now. But it also has this oil pressure issue, which obviously is the most concerning thing. I'll show you what happens. And what we're gonna do is work through this and find out why we keep getting this oil pressure issue uh, and we're gonna fix it. Rightio, so we can see that it is due for a service. We know that. I've just checked the oil. The oil level is okay. It does have an oil leak and I've cleaned up all underneath there, done a really good degrease to try and work out where that leak is coming from. But I just want to show you what we see on the dash here. Obviously, I've got the bonnet open at the moment. And also, you can see the car is still cold as well. When we look at the information screen, we can see that we have a few issues here. So at the moment, we just have the headlight related ones. Nothing too untoward there. Uh, and the bonnet is open and it needs an oil change. Let's have a look at OBD11. So right now, the only fault that we have is for this water pump fault. So I know about that. Uh, I've ordered a new pump. I'm pretty sure that shouldn't stop us with an oil pressure issue though. So we're gonna not worry about that. I can't clear it because it's a static fault. So it will just keep coming back as you can see there but there are no other engine faults at the moment. So we're just gonna go for a drive and work out when that fault actually happens. Radio. so after some testing, we've confirmed that we can definitely replicate the issue. So the oiling system on these engines has a low pressure setting and a high pressure setting. So if you stay in that low pressure setting, no problems at all. As soon as it goes into high pressure mode, so there is also a, a, a solenoid valve, an actuator valve that changes the, um, the rate of the oil pump. So when that changes into high pressure mode, it's expecting to see soon after that, a setting from the oil pressure sensor that is going to signify that it is getting high pressure. So that is the problem. So it's not getting oil pressure signal from the sensor to say that it's in high pressure mode. So it triggers the error and goes into that limp mode. So it limits the RPM to 4,000 RPM. I have a blue sensor, which is exactly the same. Um, easy, quick swap out, right? It literally takes two minutes to swap that out. So we did that went for a drive, exactly the same issue. So I doubt very much that it's an oil pressure switch issue. The other thing that we confirmed is if we rev it past, um, say, four and a half thousand RPM and, and higher, we do see the switch trigger. So it's, it, it appears that the switch it, and the wiring is okay because we can see the state change from open to closed. So that's good. That means the wiring is working as well, but it looks like we do have an oil pressure issue. So the next test is going to be to test the oil pressure. So here we have our oil pressure gauge. It's got a nice long hose on it. We can go with the actual high pressure port, which is the blue sensor down here. Okay, so the hose connection has gone really well. No problems at all. I actually ended up using a little uh, crush washer because of the way that these, um, it's, a, it's a parallel thread. So we don't rely on a tapered thread for sealing. We rely on a crush washer. So you can see there I've added a crush washer. So that's connected up. I'm just about to start it and check for leaks. Need my foot on the brake for this fella actually worked out later on looking at OBD11 that when the engine is cold it actually runs in high pressure mode 
until it gets up to normal operating temperature and then it drops to low. No leaks, which is good. I've connected it to the high pressure port as well. That means the engine's going to run without a low pressure issue right now because I have the low pressure sensor connected. So now we can just wait till this warms up and do some checks. Interesting those little flickers that we see as well. It's idling down. So we'll just let it warm up and see what the gauge says. The other thing that's probably worth noting as well is I'd rather have a high circuit oil pressure issue rather than a low pressure issue. So right now the oil pressure actually looks really good at idle. Yes, we have a hot engine, the oil is thick, but so far it's looking good. So we warmed up a little bit. We've got the gauge on the inside, which makes things nice and easy for us. So we're just going to go for a drive and see how the oil pressure gauge reacts. So what it's looking like when we look at the uh, pressure during operation, it looks like the high stage is not being commanded or is for some reason not switching into high pressure mode. I think low pressure mode looks like it's okay, but obviously something is not right with the high pressure circuit. So what we're going to do now is put some engine oil flush in it, drop the oil. I am just going to pull the sump off and check the strainer for the oil suction tube, make sure that's okay. And then uh, we'll carry on with new oil and new filter. We're going to go with some Liquid Molly Engine Flush Plus. Let's warm up the engine with that stuff in there. Let's just have a little look at the oil pressure after putting that in there as well. And just wanted to show too what actually it looks like on the Volkswagen screen. Maximum engine revs 4,000 RPM. Uh, that's really all it says. It never actually says sensor issue. It just says, hey, something's wrong. I'm gonna limit your revs to 4,000 RPM. After that little drive, we have the EPC light on because we had the error come up. In OBD11, it comes up as an oil pressure switch error. And the pressure still sitting around that 20, just under 20. And I only really saw it as go as high as, you know, just above 20 in reality in that low pressure circuit mode. We're definitely going to start out with a nice clean oil drain pan this time because we do want to check the oil to make sure there's no nasty bits in it. This is actually my first Mark 7 sump plug I've removed. Oh, it's coming out. Let's try not to let it gush. That's pretty cool. So it's just kind of released one full turn to allow it to come out. Definitely very black. Don't see any sparkles in it though. That could be good. So what I'm doing here is running it through a paint strainer. If there is anything nasty in there, I'll try and capture it. It's very thin. I mean, obviously we've got the engine oil flush in there. That is going to thin it out. And we don't see any sparkles in there. Doesn't look like there's anything that shouldn't be in there.
So this has a gauze inside here. There's a few little bits of pieces in there, but not a lot. And of course, we'll want to take a good look at the oil filter. Okay, the first thing that we can see here is we have the old style. So this has been replaced with an revised edition. So that's also something else that uh, we'll, we'll look at upgrading to as well. If it's been revised, it's been revised for a reason. Can't see yet what kind of filter this is. I also hear that people break these easily as well. So I'm being pretty careful. I just want to see if we can see what kind of filter this is. So there's no label on it anywhere. Obviously that's probably concerning. If it was an OEM one, we would expect it to have a Volkswagen or an OEM supplier at least. But we can open this up now and, and have a, a good look at the condition of the oil that's been flowing through here. I don't see any sparkles, which is good. Yeah, I don't see anything nasty or anything that we should be too worried about, except the fact that the filter is not branded at all. Well, you never know. Hey, I have heard of people changing the filter and solving their problem. So as you can see, I've just dropped the sump off and we have some floaty bits in there. But they're plastic. I think it might be from the bottom tray, the windage tray. Not quite sure yet. But uh, let's have a look at the oil strainer to make sure there's not a heap of stuff in there. Try and find out where these have come from. It's very thin and it's been um, in a circular shape. Let's see if we can find out where that's from. Let's have a look here. Ooh, I can see a bit of plastic in here. So this is not good. That could definitely be blocking up the strainer. Wow. Now, where are they from? Hmm. Don't see any broken parts of that at this stage. But yeah, there's definitely some bits and pieces in the strainer. But as you can see, Large pieces, yes, but there's no tiny bits in there. So that's kind of encouraging. I've just popped that bottom windage tray off. As you can see, the, all the plastic is removed from that. I've also removed the oil pickup as well. But at the moment, I cannot see where those bits of plastic have actually come from show you what I mean. So here's the windage tray and and I must say the bits of plastic that came off it look very much like you know it's very thin very much like this sort of thing but there's no evidence anywhere on this of any broken edges. So that's very strange. The other thing is when I pulled the strainer out, these are the bits that I actually got out of this cup. So that's obviously not good. They're all going to block that as the oil tries to get sucked up into there. I'm hoping that this is our only problem. There was nothing inside past the strainer that came out. So I'm confident that the strainer's done its job. All of those little bits of plastic have been caught in there nicely. 
So this is the total of all the bits that have come out of the sump, the broken bits of plastic. I still can't find where they're from, so uh, it can't be possible that someone would replace a broken windage tray and leave them in the sump because you have to remove the sump to get to the windage tray. So at this stage, I'm just not sure where they're from. I'm going to do some more investigating. So I could not find any evidence of where those bits of plastic came from. The only thing I can think of is the little tubes that go over the top of the balance shafts. Maybe they or one of those or part of those has disintegrated. So all I can do is put it all back together because I can't tell that without opening the engine and removing the engine. So remove all the plastic put the baffle back on, put the sump back on, of course the oil pickup tube. Now we're just going to go and put new filter in it and new oil of course. So I'm using a MAN filter HU6013Z. Okay so it's all back together again, fresh oil and filter. Uh, I'm going to need to hit the brake to start it. Got our oil pressure up straight away. It's good. Got about 56 psi there. Obviously, the engine's cold. Yeah, we'll just switch off, check for leaks. So we're just going to do a run to simulate seeing it change from low to high. So we do have in OBD11 the ability to see when the mode changes from low circuit operation to high circuit operation. So right now it's in low until it gets to about it needs a bit of load as well, so I'll kind of have to accelerate. Um, but we'll see this jump up, and then when I go off, it will stay high for quite a while, and then it will go back to low mode. So we'll replicate that. It's in high mode. It stays in high mode for a while, and now the EPC's come on, but now it's gone to low mode. So I do believe we have fixed the problem and the reason we're still getting the alarm is because the switch is disconnected because I've got the gauge in there. So now we'll go home, remove the gauge and put the switch back in place and go for another test drive. All right, so we fixed the problem. We're gonna show you now how this should work. So we can see we got low pressure now and obviously I'm on 3,000 RPM, 3,000, so now it should switch to high pressure and you should see the switch goes from open to closed. So now I'll drop back, go to low pressure mode and you can see the switch goes to open. I'll do it again. So we got high pressure and closed. So that has fixed our issue. So we've gotten rid of all the faults now, except this light bending issue. After a few seconds, you can actually see the headlights kind of moving around there and doing their test thing. Everything kind of looks okay. But after a little while, a error come up. And that's the only thing that we got now so everything is good with the oil pressure issue there we go so error bending light afs issue i suspect we got a, a module failure on the uh, headlight on the right side headlight looking at obd 11. so we've got to work on that but otherwise the car is fixed no oil pressure issues we are good to go